It wouldn't be a season of mom's wooden spoon if we didn't use this particular ingredient. I agree, because sometimes it's really tasty. You're right, but sometimes it really isn't. Oh, it's bad. I wonder what today's recipe is going to be like. Bad. Welcome to Mom's Wooden Spoon. Get your apron on and your fanny flicker ready as we cook up some nostalgia. Ooh, yummy. To celebrate National Jello Week, which starts today. <gasps> Happy National Jello Week, Kristen. Why, thank you, Carrie. We are going to be reveling in the recipes that we can make out of the joys of Jello Cookbook. I mean, I am ready for revelry. Me too. And this is actually the book where we found that Jell-O Kid Stuff flyer that had the peanut butter parfait recipe in it. Which we do not recommend you make. We do not. That no. was not good. Too it, sweet. Oh, it was. Yes. Yeah, way too sweet. However, this Joys of Jell-O cookbook was published 13 years before that nifty flyer. And oh, so these are like old school Jell-O recipes. Old school from 19. 1963. So we're going to go way back in time for this one. Okay. That's older than you and me. I know, right? So this is one heck of a weird recipe. Yeah, this is a... <laughs> Carrie doesn't even have the words for it. it. I, have, I have never seen the likes of this. <laughs> it is called herb glazed sandwiches. Well, I mean, and that just sounds perfectly fine. Right. Who wouldn't want an, an herb glazed sandwich? That sounds delicious. I'd like an herb glazed turkey. Yeah. Yeah. It, and and the idea of the recipe was to keep your finger sandwiches fresh. That's you right. You could make them in the morning, add your herb glaze, have your friends over for a nice luncheon. Yeah. Is the bread stale? No. no. It's under an herb glaze. Yes. Yes, but it's an herb glaze made with lemon jello that has been cooked with peppercorns, a bay leaf, a little dried dill, and a pinch of cayenne pepper. Yum. And yeah. then if I uh, recall correctly, then the recipe gives us some delicious <laughs> options. We could do any kind of sandwich we want. Oh, yeah. And these are all open face sandwiches. So then you pour the glaze on the open face sandwich. Sure. Keeps everything fresh, protected right. from the environment. Right. right? But we don't want to sog up the top piece of bread. No way. Right. And so, you know, some of the recipe choices for the sandwiches were hmm, sketchy. Oh, no. I mean, they're fantastic. Oh, yeah. Like they suggest just basically taking whole wheat bread mm -hmm. and putting sliced hard boiled egg and cooked shrimp on the top. Just plain. Yum. -er. Oh, man. Let's see. What are some of the other weird ones that were kind of scary to me? Isn't there like me? a corned beef one? There wasn't. Oh, it was liver pate sprinkled with, again, hard boiled egg. Chopped I mean, that's, hard boiled. That's clearly for the upper crust. I mean, the pate. Yes. Well, you could just use brunch wagger. I mean, if you are <laughs> not upper crust, that's right. Just a slice of brunchwager. That's right. You know, though, quite frankly, I can see that happening. Yeah. Although, honestly, that sounds better than the other options. Brunchwager, a slice. It's kind of creamy. It's not real dry on a right, slice of bread. Right. With some herb glaze over it, that doesn't seem horrible. I don't know. But what the really did one. me in. Uh, there was one that I was like, Holy oh, moly. was it the one that had mustard, Swiss cheese, sauerkraut, and corned beef? That's it. That is the so one. So it's like a Reuben. Let's make a Reuben, but instead of a Russian or Thousand Island dressing, let's put jello on the top of it. An herb glaze. It yeah. doesn't seem like that would go with those flavors. Ugh. At all. The tart lemon with the tart sauerkraut. Oy. Uh -uh. So we tried to go what we thought would be the least offensive sandwich, which is basically just roast beef with a slice of tomato on the top. And a little horseradish. That's right. And you butter the bread first. Yep. And instead of doing a big old slice of bread, I just got a baguette and we're going to slice little pieces of baguette. So it is like a two bite sandwich so we don't gag too much. One bite for Kristen, <laughs> one bite for Carrie. That's right. And again, we'll do rock, paper, scissors to see who has to bite first. <laughs> I mean, I kind of feel like we could probably get away with making a sandwich. <laughs> we could. It's going to be a waste to make more. I cannot imagine that we are going to eat that and go back for more. No. And I think 
I mean, this makes a ton of glaze. It's saying it, it makes like one and three quarters cups of glaze and you're supposed to put two tablespoons of glaze on a small sandwich. Oh, I, no. I, um, <laughs> we're just going to see how this goes, right? Well, I mean, we're going to do it and we're going to try it. You know, I'm not coming in with high expectations. No, I am not either. So if this ends up being delicious, it's going to rock my world. Oh, it will. I mean, oh, yeah. yeah. Color me purple and call me happy. I don't think that's <laughs> a phrase. <laughs> Color me purple and call me happy. Is that what you said? <laughs> what I the heck is I that? I couldn't think of any color to say and you've got a purple cloth right next <laughs> to you. Color me purple and call me happy. I don't think that's a saying to date. We've created something new. We're going to go viral and finally get more than 90 listeners on our podcast. I mean, everybody, everybody, everywhere you go, you're going to be walking through the grocery store and you're going to hear someone two aisles away go, oh my gosh, this horseradish is on sale. Well, color me purple and call me happy. <laughs> Oh, gosh. My <laughs> cheeks hurt from laughing. If you have a teenager, oh. I feel like that is a statement you need to use to them. Because if I, just <laughs> saying good morning to them gets them to roll their eyes at you. Oh, yeah. Wait until they hear that <laughs> gem. Just say that. Oh, good grief. Well, we had better get this show on a road because we have to simmer this jello mixture. First, we simmer water with all the spices in it. And then we have to strain out all the spices and then mix the powdered jello into that seasoned water. Yum. I know, right? I mean, you had me at seasoned water, uh, Kristen. And then we have to chill it until it's syrupy. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. We shall divide and conquer. Okay. I'll make sandwiches because that is in my wheelhouse. You can cut the tomato? Well, not well, but we're okay. making two sandwiches for crying out loud. Well, that's true. And you work on the jello. How's okay. that sound? Yeah, that sounds great. Okay. Now, as we are cooking, I had looked up some things about cooking in the year that this recipe came out. And we haven't done anything about 1963 because we weren't even born yet. No, and I think that was pre-Mary's memo. I think it probably was. Yeah, I want to say yes. like 73 was about the first year that Maybe. they came out. I'm not sure. But 1963 was the very first year that the wonderful Julia Child had her cooking show on PBS called The French Chef. Oh, she's awesome. She is. I think we should do the entire rest of this podcast in Julia Child voices. I feel like the idea is to keep listeners. Oh, and not drive them off quickly. <laughs> well, I have a great story to tell you. You all remember our friend Lori, who came and tasted our delicious cake that had beets in it. Do you remember yes, that? Yes, the surprise cake. Yeah, I've got a secret cake. Well, do you know, I recently saw her, and she told me a story that she used to work with a woman who used to be a nun. Okay. Who then stopped being a nun and worked for Julia Child on her show. Do you know what she did? It was a sous chef. Well, kind of ish. She sat under the counter where Julia was cooking and would hand her stuff during the show. Now that's a gig <laughs> that's that I would gig. like. <laughs> I mean, if you're going into showbiz. I mean, you wouldn't have to worry how you looked. You could wear ugly clothes. You're sitting on the floor, handed wooden spoons up to Julia Child. It just requires a little organization. Yeah. A little pre-planning. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That's a gig for me. I think that's mm -hmm. a good gig. I feel if I'm making it in Hollywood, that's where Ooh, how I'm yeah. going to do it. Okay. So I'm going to make four little Sammies because that way we can torture our loved ones. That's a great idea. We can make sure they all taste it. Yeah. You know, and as we decided to make these herb glaze sandwiches, I was looking around online to see if there were other recipes for jello on sandwiches, right? Oh, okay. You know? And I found something on my favorite Reddit. I Reddit. have some Reddit finds as well. Ooh. So the one I found, this is what it was titled, Warning Cringe Alert. Oh, it was a picture. It said, I'm not sure who or why these were brought. I didn't try them, but I was hoping there was booze in them for other people's sake. Okay. And it was literally white bread with green jello sandwiched in between two white bread slices. No. And they were cut into little bites. Did they cut the crusts off at least? Yes. Hmm. So it was like fancy. Interesting. And they didn't put anything in the jello. The jello was the protein. That's all that it looked like. It looked like white bread with a 
thick slab o green jello. That is something special. Something special. What did you find on Reddit? So I found a recipe mm-hmm. that uh, somebody posted, and it is called tuna jello salad. Oh, no. And it sounds like a pretty, we start off good. Tuna, oh. chopped walnuts, celery, oh. some yellow pepper, okay, some okay. hard-boiled eggs. Yeah. Pimento. Yeah. Some cheese. Most Not of that I could, I could handle. Yep. And then we're going to take some lemon jello. Okay. Uh, salt and grated onion. Oh, no. We're going to put that whole bad boy in a dish. Yes. Oh, no. Just, I'm sorry. Just the jello. Let it congeal. And then we're going to add in some mayonnaise, and you have your choice for this next one, heavy cream or small packages of coffee creams or powdered milk. Coffee creamer? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, no. And then you're going to mix all that together and put it in an oblong Pyrex dish and chill it in the refrigerator. And then... Oh, no. There's more. You're going to serve it with hot peas and rolls. Even better. Oh my gosh, that sounds horrific. What is up with that? Horrific. So people started responding to some of their savory jello things yeah. that they have had. And so I wrote down some of my favorite responses. So one person wrote, we <laughs> have a similar family recipe. Oh. Tuna jello salad. Oh, Step God. one, yeah. put in garbage can. Uh, that's awesome. Oh, that was good. And then my favorite yes. is... My mom used to make orange jello with grated carrots and sliced olives. What? It's a nice spot between savory and sweet. Oh. I've made it myself. Now I think it's time to go make it again. No. I mean, I even love olives, but olives with orange jello and carrots. And and she acted like it was good. Oh my and she gosh. makes it. Okay, so I was inspired. Okay. By these crappy, savory jello recipes. Okay, I want you to tell about it, but I'm going to go ahead and start this simmering. So you're going to hear a little noise there. We're going to turn this sucker on to get simmering. Okay. So I have, Kristen, a list of four jello recipe titles. Four jello four recipe yes. titles. And I want you to pick which one I made up. Huh. Are you ready? Okay, I'm ready. Okay, <clears throat> number one. Yeah. Cherry ketchup salad. Oh, God, I'd like to think that's fake, but... Number two. Okay. Pickle olive jello salad. Oh, come on. Number three. Carrot zucchini beet vegetable salad. Okay. And number four, pimento cheese jello salad. Oh, man. I only made up one of them, and I'm not kidding. It's like sometimes you make them all up, and you're like, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. no. Three of them are real recipes. One is one I made up. I was going to do like pea and tuna fish jello salad, but I thought that would kind of give it away. Yeah, that would. Okay. Yeah. You want me to do them again? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Cherry ketchup salad. Okay. Pickle olive jello salad. Carrot zucchini beet vegetable salad. Okay. And pimento cheese jello salad. Okay. I am going to guess one because I think it's a little more trendy nowadays. And okay. I'm thinking that these crazy jello recipes are from the 60s sure, and 70s. Sure. So I am going to guess that you made up the pimento cheese jello salad. That is incorrect. What? I mean, the, literally the recipe is you take pimento cheese and you add like a jello glaze into. Oh, no. Oh, it was gag worthy. No, oh. I made up. Carrot, zucchini, beet, vegetable salad. Well, that one sounded the most reasonable to me. (laughs) The cherry ketchup one was real. That is what inspired this whole thing. I was like, how? Why? Where? Oh, my gosh. Yes. That's Cherry ketchup salad. I thought that was great. Okay, so in the 60s, Jell-O was a big thing, and they even tried, well, the savory salad, Jell-O, which we had talked about. Yeah, of course. So I found an ad for these new salad gelatins. That's right. And the flavors that they come in. And so they have celery, mixed vegetable, uh, Italian salad, and seasoned tomato. Oh, to make like a tomato aspic. Yeah, we've told our listeners about these before. But not tomato, tomato Okay, we didn't tell our listeners about that. I don't know, but it what blends the tastes of meat, fish, and veggies you put in a salad. Okay, and here's the okay the fabulous. Yeah. Um, it is, you'll never make a gelatin salad that is a dessert at heart 
again. No. So delicious that they knew you would want to make savory jello salads. Is it like tomato and orange? Maybe? I don't know. I don't know. I tomato. Tomato. I'm all self righteous going, yeah, Carrie, we've told our listeners about this before and you didn't remember. Loser. Yeah. Yeah, I did remember, but I thought this was slightly different. Well, the tomato is completely different. And super horrifying. And it sometimes is. it's worth hearing twice. It is. Well, I found something interesting about Jell-O as well. Okay. It is a website called Joey Green's Wacky Uses for Things. Okay, who's Joey? I have no idea. What? But uh, he apparently goes on the Today Show and stuff like that. Oh, and he's like a guy. He's like, a guy. Okay. And I found uh, one of the pages on his website was Joey Green's 22 Wacky Uses for Jello Gelatin. Oh, fantastic. Yes. So I'm going to list some of his wacky ideas. Can I think of, I have an idea. Yeah, yeah. Okay, give me one. I think you could use it to soak your nails in, to strengthen oh. your nails, because it does have a lot of collagen and stuff in right. it. Right. That is a clever idea. He did not say to soak your nails. Okay. But he did recommend soaking your feet in jello to deodorize them. What? <laughs> yes. That's the weirdest. I think this guy may have a jello fetish because a lot of his wacky ideas was using jello on your body parts. Hmm. I mean, yeah. I went with nails, but... Right. He also recommended, I, I can kind of see this as a hair gel. Okay. Well, I suppose can't... it's gelatinous. So it would be like dip it a do back in the day, maybe. Uh, Not but really. But it's edible. I mean, you would yeah. think it would break down. Probably and get like powdery as it dries. In a stinky, non-healthy yeah. way. What if you use tomato jello in your hair? That well, would be nice. Another one I thought was really weird. It says you can stop a nosebleed with jello. Now, how weird is that? Okay. Oh, there's a lot of questions there. Yeah. I used to have nosebleeds all the time when I was in middle school. And so this would have been very helpful. I hope the school nurse would have a packet of Jell-O. And here's what you're supposed to do. Oh, oh he gives instructions. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, good. Because oh, yeah. I, I was really curious as to how one would do. Do you have right. to prepare the Jell-O? No, but the measurements on this is pretty scary. There's measurements. Oh, yeah. Okay. You are supposed to take an entire tablespoon of jello powder okay now this to me is reminiscent of the cinnamon challenge of a few years ago you take the entire tablespoon of jello powder put it on your tongue and press the jello against the roof of your mouth slowly letting it dissolve huh how would you not cough or inhale that and then sneeze and gag on that i yeah a whole tablespoon a whole t i can see maybe a teaspoon right a tablespoon of jello powder and apparently it helps with clotting the wound how how does it clot a wound in your nasal passages I don't, I don't know. It makes no dang sense to me. It doesn't make no. a lick of sense. I think this guy is weird because then again, he loves to talk about putting your body in jello. So, um, um, wait, what? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, they have jello wrestling. Well, that's one of the things he suggests. He suggests is. Seriously? Yeah. He's a kinky guy. He says, um, <laughs> you can, you can uh, wrestle in it. You can fill someone's bathtub with it as a prank or... You can use it in your bathtub to enhance marital relations. Shut your face. <laughs> That's what it said. <laughs> and how much jello do you need to put in a bathtub? Can you imagine how much? If you're using a tablespoon on your tongue for a nosebleed, I mean box after box after, after box. box. You'd have to go to Costco. You would. Oh, yeah, for sure. That's craziness. <laughs> I those were in Joey insane. Green Jeans. He's Joey, a weirdo. Oh my gosh, Joey Green Jeans. Man. He's crazy. That's something else. I know, right? I hmm. feel like maybe you should just stick to eating it. I skip, think so too. Skip the glaze. Yep. Skip the wackadoodle stuff. Oh yeah. Oh look, Carrie has made four lovely sandwiches, which we are henceforth going to destroy with some jello glaze. We're going to throw those bad boys out as soon as we try the first oh, one. Oh, yes, we are. And okay. in the meantime, we are still simmering. Simmering, simmering. Every day was simmering. Okay, I'm going to take a picture because they're pretty cute. I did a pretty good job. They're very nice. I'm so glad we went Thank tiny. You. You're allowed to make full-size sandwiches. And I thought, I don't think I can gag down or waste an entire sandwich if this is horrific. I will say the only concern I have with these yeah. 
is it's a baguette. So the outside is kind of crusty. Oh, right. And you know how it gets kind of hard to bite through? I had that concern, but here was what happened. I looked for cocktail rice. I thought that would be perfect. Rye bread with roast beef and horseradish. Delicious. Cocktail rice tender. You can bite it. It's made for appetizers. Nobody had any. Well, that's just as well because I'm not a fan of the rye bread. Okay, well, then I did great. It's a little um, potent. Yeah, and I had this baguette left over from dinner the other night, and I thought, <laughs> well, let's just use it. If we're going to oh. throw it away, we might as well. So the edge is going to be super chewy. It might be, or maybe the jello will soften it up a little oh. bit because there is a little bread showing around the roast beast. There is. I yeah. didn't know quite how to do it. I, I Googled this recipe. I Googled like glazed sandwiches Yeah. and um, found this recipe with a, a picture of the oh, roast beef. Really? Mm -hmm. You did a, better than I did. It was a big, uh, I'm sorry, what was that? What did you find? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, tell us what you found, Kiri. How, how did I do compared to what you found? Adequate. Oh. <laughs> um, so they had the roast beef with the edges all like ruffly on the top. Oh, fancy. And then they were super shiny due to the, oh, the glaze. You know, maybe this will be tasty. Maybe. I kind of feel like if it was just gelatin with, with the herbs, with the herbs oh, in and it. another and different thing. herbs, like it's, it is weird. It's the, yeah, there's a whole thing going on the internet where people are joking about the fact that nobody knows what flavor bay is. It's potent and unpleasant, but you add it to stuff and you never go, oh, that has too much bay or, huh, I added one bay leaf and I can't taste it very much. Nobody goes around going, hmm, what do I taste in this chili? <gasps> Must be bay. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I've, I've never tasted anything my husband has cooked and thought, you know, what would make this better is a bay leaf. Bay. Right. Mm -hmm. But you can taste something and go, oh, I taste the oregano. I can taste the dill. Mm -hmm. I can taste basil. Mm -hmm. But nobody knows what a bay leaf really tastes like. No, but just of the herbs that you just mentioned. Yeah. The dill, I'm fine with. Yeah. But oregano, right. a little rosemary. Yeah. A little, you said one other one that I thought would have been delicious mm -hmm. that I can't recall anymore. <laughs> Basil. Basil. Yeah, that would have yes. been tasty. That All might be nice. All of those. Yeah. I'm fine with salt. I'm fine with a little cayenne. Give it yeah, a little Yeah, that's zip. in there too. Yeah. All of that, I think it's the bay. And then we're going to add vinegar. Yeah. So it's going to be tart too. Yeah. This will be something. Well, you know, whatever, we're making it. That's so funny. I want you to All smell right. this. So it's, it's green kind of looking. the color of well hydrated urine. It's so true. It smells real dilly, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. With a hint of bay, if I actually have any <laughs> idea what that <laughs> All right. smelled or tasted like. I'm going like. to strain this. You know what I think we should do, Kristen? What should we do, Carrie? This is a gift to our listeners. What's that? Let's have you take a bite of the bay leaf now that it's been simmered and soft and tell us all exactly what bay tastes like. I'm totally going to do it. I'm no chicken licking. Let me get that bay leaf. First, I'm going to smell it. It's been all rehydrated. Yep. It smells spicy. Ooh, okay. Let me smell it too. There's Enough. a little uh, bit of dill on it, but smell it. It smells It does smell warm. spicy. Mm -hmm. She's not really chewing it. Maybe she's licking it. <laughs> yeah. It tastes like a big fat nothing. Huh. I don't taste a blooming thing. Interesting. It smells yummy. Mm -hmm. Maybe it just gives a scent. Maybe it's more of an aromatic. Probably. Huh. All right. How about if okay. you do the vinegar? Oh, I think that's I, the vinegar part is really where you lose Three me. tablespoons. Uh, Carrie, three tablespoons. We only have one and a quarter cup of liquid. And we're going to add three tablespoons of vinegar to it. We have made other Jello recipes with insanely low expectations. Yes. I'm thinking lemon jello, corned beef mold. That's right. And it was shockingly Edible. not bad. I wouldn't need a big plate of it. Oh, no. No. But it was, considering what we expected, yeah. it was a tasty delight. It really was. All right. I'm tearing open the jello. Now that we have those other things in there, the smell is much more powerful. I'm feeling and slightly unpleasant. nauseated from this, really. All right, I'm going to stir the jello okay. in, and we're going to keep stirring. So let's think about some fun stuff, 
from 1963 because I'm really nauseated from smelling this. Remember how you were with the beef brownies? Oh, that one really put me. Oh, this yeah. one's kind of put me over the edge. Okay, so let's think about some music from 1963 because I'm the music girl. I like to make you guys Spotify playlists. I didn't make you one for this, but I probably could have. Oh. There were some really, really amazing hits from 63 and it surprised me. Okay. So one of our dad's all-time favorite songs, actually, I believe it is his ringtone, Bird is the Word. No, but that's a great song. Bird, 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 bird. bird is the word. It is a horrible song. That is pretty much all they do for two minutes. That's right. He and sings he, it great. Oh, he loves it. Absolutely yeah. loves it. No, no, no. It was down, 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 burning ring of fire. Oh, Johnny he, Cash. He does love himself, some Johnny he Cash. He does. He likes to tell a joke he made. Oh, he made a joke? Oh, yeah, right. Just <laughs> one. He uh, he went to work one day, and he had on a uh, gray shirt and gray pants. Yeah. And, you know, Johnny Cash used to dress all in black. Black, yeah. And so he got to work, and he kept telling everybody he was Johnny Cash light. That's hilarious. Nobody thought so. Oh, come on. I think that's funny. <laughs> he got no laughs. Obviously, you're his daughter for a oh. reason. <laughs> well, another famous song that came out that I didn't realize was a big hit. I thought it was actually a kid's song. Hello, mother. Hello, father. Oh. Hey, I'm at Camp Granada. That was one of the top 100 hits of 1963. It, 1963, there's some other songs from that time, and it is pretty remarkable, the goofiness of the words. You are not kidding, because there was <laughs> a song by I, Chuck Berry. Okay. All about his ding-dong. What? My ding-a-ling. My ding-a-ling. My ding-a-ling. Won't you? Play with my dingling. I did not realize it, it is was a male anatomy song. His dingling. Oh uh, yeah, that's a highly inappropriate song. I remember singing it on the school bus in elementary school. That's hilarious. we were going on some. Well, like, no, because you had no trip. idea that. No, was it a... just sounded like fun. Won't yes. you play? Yeah. The bay in that jello is so you overwhelming. Do not know if it's the bay. It's a spicy smell. It is a spicy smell. This smells like we've taken Lemon Pledge and mixed horrific herbal things to it. It is just heinous. It is. Okay, so we have that in the fridge. It's cooling. It doesn't say how long to cool it until it's syrupy at all. So I guess we're just going to have to keep checking it. We're going to wing it, Kristen. Well, oh. one of my favorite things to do, I can see by the look on your face that you are already nervous. I don't like winging things. Oh my gosh. Today. I am so excited to live a willy-nilly lifestyle. Oh, but that's when things go awry. They do. We couldn't find rye, Kristen. Oh, that's true. Okay, and I'm glad we couldn't. Alrighty, well, shall we wait for some jello to cool? We will. Okay, we will be right back. Well, I think the gel is gelatinized. It is. So we did take a shortcut, full disclosure. Yep. We put it in the freezer because who's got time for sitting around watching glaze glaze? No kidding. We even put it in like an eight by eight casserole dish so it would get, you know, chilled faster. Increase the surface area. That's right. But unlike other times when we've worked with jello, we did not go too far and turn it into complete jello. No. So it is now... Kind of a disgusting yellow color oh. with flakes of dillweed suspended throughout. Oh, yes. And it is syrupy. Absolutely mm -hmm. syrupy. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. It smells not very good. <laughs> but let's try it. So okay. Carrie is going to pour it over the little sandwiches, which I have put on a rack. And I put the rack on a cookie sheet. It looks funny. Well, you can certainly see why you want to put it on a rack. You don't want it sitting in that jello. No. Well, <laughs> oh, whoa. There's some sections here that are a little more jello y yeah. than uh, glazy. And so. <laughs> Oh, oh, I saw as, a clump, a clot yeah, of jello come it, out. Sometimes it... Oh my gosh. You know what that yellow reminds me of now that I see it kind of sitting on the tray? It's like the color of Disney's Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, that's a, a nice way to share. To me, it looks like someone was real dehydrated <laughs> and had to go potty. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to take a picture. So I have a before picture of them. And now an after picture of them. Oh. Do you want to throw them into the fridge real fast, Kristen? Yeah, because we want to get that glaze to kind of thicken. Yeah, so visually, 
they're very pretty. I they mean, really see do in the look picture. Nice. They're super shiny. I think it'll look pretty on a little plate. Yeah. So they go back in the fridge until the glaze is firm. So apparently we're going to move somewhere between syrupy and firm. I honestly don't understand why. I don't want to be slurping it as I take a bite of the sandwich. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's just pretty nasty. Yeah, that doesn't sound very good. Pretty nasty. Oy, oy, oy. All right, so should we wait until they're ready and then come back? Or did you have some fun and exciting factoid that you've been just dying to share? You know how I love to do research on the year in which the recipe came out? Yes. And this Joys of Jello cookbook was from 1963. Yep. And so I found a game that I'm not sure if we loved it as kids. I don't think we ever played it as was meant to be played as kids. But it came out in 63. I feel like I know exactly just given that opener. Really? Mousetrap. Absolutely. Never, uh-uh. ever, ever played that game correctly. Loved the game. Oh, yeah. Never played it correctly. That's so funny. It was a pain in the drain to set up. Mm-hmm. And then things would not work quite properly as you played. But it sure was fun to play with the little Rube Goldberg situations that were in it. It was. Yeah. I don't even know that I know how to play the game because right. we would just set up the mouse trap and, you know, who goes around the board. Woo, yeah, and, that was fun. Yeah. Do you remember your favorite part of the mouse trap contraption? I don't. All I remember is the um, red plastic net oh, yes. that fell down the plastic yellow post and the post was almost like a saw blade. Yes. And so as it fell, it would <laughs> jiggity joggity. That's right. Down. But I, that is the only part that I remember about the entire contraption. Really, the only thing I remember other than the net is a plastic boot on a stick. <gasps> and it would go flop. And I think it would kick a ball and the ball would go into a basket. I do. I don't remember what <laughs> happened bucket. to the ball. It went yes. into a bucket. It was a heavy metal ball. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I remember the boot. The boot. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah I love that game. Never played it correctly. You know, a, a game, I don't know if it came out in 63, but another game that we would play quite often often that we did not play as directed was cootie i was just gonna say that really it's the only other childhood game i can think of that the the actual game was way lamer yeah than just playing you just put together the cootie and it yeah. was kind of fun it was yeah but i remember babysitting for some kids and they're like let's play cootie and i'm like okay and i yeah. start putting the cootie together and they're like what are you doing that's not how you play the game oh and i'm like there's a game <laughs> <laughs> have any idea we never 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 played it no we just no. put the cootie together right i found a 1963 popular mechanics oh magazine because we're so into mechanics well you know just because it's not something that i remember right when nothing in 1963 doesn't yeah. mean that somebody else wouldn't enjoy it mm-hmm. and it cost 35 cents whoa what a deal what a deal I enjoyed looking through it. Mm -hmm. Um, First off, there are all kinds of ads for various education opportunities. Oh, my. Yes. Do this education opportunity and earn three to five dollars an hour. Whoa. Oh, yeah. A lot of that. Wow. Do you remember those things when we were kids? You could draw Timmy the turtle and then get accepted into an art school. Do you remember those? I do. Yeah. Were they like in the Sunday paper? That's right. Mm -hmm. And you just had to send this into this particular school and you could be accepted and become a famous artist just by drawing Timmy the turtle. Yeah. Well, this you could become a machinist, but they did have some things that are not anything surprising, but I don't know. I forget Mm -hmm. that these things just haven't been around forever. Right. Okay, so one of the articles was titled, If Disc Brakes Are So Good, Why Don't More Cars Have Them? Oh my gosh. One of the things it said is with a disc brake, you have to slam, literally slam on the brake with a lot of force. Oh. And that lady drivers would not have the strength to successfully use (gasps) such disc brakes. Whoa, which reminds me of our grandma's car. It was a Hornet and it was brown, which is hilarious because Bill Cosby had a comic character called the Brown Hornet. So did my grandma. That's right. Remember she got the seat changed to this god awful plastic stuff that would stick to your legs in the heat and leave a waffle weave on the back of your bare legs. She left her car outside and it was so old that the sun would come in and rot the The fabric. fabric. Yeah. yeah. So she'd get it recovered. Yeah. I remember yep. that. She also got 
power brakes put on it. And the first time you drove that car, you would merely tap those brakes and go through the windshield. Oh, it was horrible. <laughs> it was. horrible. She drove it all the time and would send you through the windshield. That's right. It yeah. was crazy. It was nuts. You looked like an absolute idiot. It was like, ee, oh, ee. Oh, because you were stopping so hard and then you let it go and then you get scared and then you stop it real hard. Yeah. Ridiculous. Because a little car like that. But I mean, I never even thought of that. It's mm -hmm. because when she got that, they didn't have the power. Part no. Of the power brakes. That's right. Well, I think I'm going to go grab the sandwiches. Ooh, let's do it. Okay. So look at this. I think it's gelatinized oh, it pretty is. well. How okay. many are you going to stick on that plate two. for us to try? Oh, Just okay. two. All right, take a little picture. I gave us some punch, too, since this is a party. Oh, this feels just like an afternoon luncheon. Since this is the recipe that you chose, yeah. that my gift to you is letting you go first. And I'm going for this one. Oh, she picked the smallest one. I did. Okay. That's great. Uh -huh. All right, so we've got horseradish butter, roast beef, a very thinly sliced tomato, and the glaze. And I will tell you that Kristen on occasion says she likes something and she's it's really not her favorite she's she's a very positive person and so you're always going to hear the most positive spin on her thoughts about a food so I think this will be super interesting to hear what she yeah. has to say based on <laughs> the look on her face and the shaking of the head back and forth <laughs> Okay, so I, I went through a range of emotions. You go ahead and take a bite, and I'll tell you what my range was. I took a bite, and I was like, well, this is not bad. This is tasty. And then the dill hit. It is so much dill. It just kind of gagged me out a little bit. And then as the jello kind of went away, and I got down to the horseradish and the roast beef, I thought, oh, well, this is tasty when the jello's not there. What do you think? Carrie's face has turned beet red. That is horrible. <laughs> I'm going to take another bite. The little sandwich? Lovely. The jello glaze? I have no, no kind words about <laughs> the jello glaze. So Kristen has an upset Elvis look on her face. One lip is curled. Her head's shaken back and forth. I really need some of the liquid to run that that lemon nightmare out when, of my mouth when the lemon nightmare goes away it's a delicious sandwich the sandwich is tasty i made some fabulous sandwiches today y'all you did great i don't notice the cayenne i don't notice that the jello seems salty it is way too much dill and i think i may taste bay leaf and it is just freaking freaking nasty i have a nothing but aftertaste of bay leaf in my mouth. We now know what bay leaf tastes oh, like. And there's a reason nobody knows what it tastes like. <laughs> because if you did, you would not be putting that in your food. <laughs> and it's not just so you're hit with lemon. And it's just not lemon because, you know, there's vinegar in there. Yeah. It is lemon. It is. I don't <laughs> notice the vinegar really much. That's, no. that's not grossing me out at all. It's the herb choices. It was lemon and bay. Mm awful and I feel like I should take another bite to better be able to explain my dislike but I'm not yeah. going to people I love you but my <laughs> level of dedication has hit Oof. it's max yeah it's the herbs they chose I might actually have liked this if it had basil or some other herb in it and not lemon the lemon is what else would you choose well, I would go plain gelatin and just have it the herb flavors okay so you know what might even taste good like on a chicken sandwich would be to like infuse cucumber in it or something like that I know exactly what they needed what tomato that's what would taste good dun 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 it is the perfect opportunity yes for tomato it is the perfect You know, I say tomato. It's possible that I typoed tomato. <laughs> <laughs> Just what? dawned on me. Oh my gosh. Wait, let me get my phone. What if it's not tomato and we have done an entire podcast? <laughs> oh, oh, I no. said that. I thought, huh. I wonder if I just hit the wrong letter. Oh, no. Oh my gosh. Okay, wait, everybody. Tomato. Oh, shoot. I can't even but, type. But in all reality, any of those. 1965 salad gelatin flavors. Yes. A celery, a mixed yes. vegetables, Italian salad. Those would have been delicious. Oh, 1963. So they weren't out then. Right. Carrie, I'm not seeing tomato. 
Did you try Jello salad gelatin? Not yet. Let me Google it correctly for you. Okay. I found it. I found it. It's okay. on a website. Oh, yeah. Called midcenturymenu.com. Kudos yeah. to whoever runs that. Yeah. And if I zoom in on the ad, hold on, yeah. I'm old. I have to take my glasses off. It says, oh, what is it? <laughs> so I copied the yes. wording of the new Jello salad gelatin comes in four flavors, blah, 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 seasoned tomato. Yes. However, oh, no. if I look up at the ad, oh, the no. ad says season tomato. Oh, my God. Mid-century mom. If you're checking out your previous oh. web pages, um, yeah. you've got a typo. <laughs> <laughs> I love the name, though. I tomato. Think I love it. <laughs> I think they, if we could go back to 1965, yeah. we should fix that. I would glaze a sandwich with one of those. I probably would like um do they have a cucumber one or was it just celery no it's... I think there's an Italian seasoning one that might be tasty mm -hmm. Italian salad well I can only see Ital her writing I'm not trusting that <laughs> Italian anymore. salad Italian salad mixed vegetables celery and seasoned tomato oh any of those would be tastier mm -hmm. than what we have here but then again this recipe came out prior to yeah two years yeah. Uh, before, well, at least before that ad existed. So yeah. they might not have, but I can see why they created those. Yes. Because if people are making this crap. Right. They were like, oh, well, this is bound to taste anything would taste better than, than the lemon debacle. It was the lemon debacle of 1963. I would have to say it was. Yeah. I will say, however, that I would eat this over orange jello with grated carrots and green olives. I totally agree. So, you know, hmm. I, I said Kristen likes to have a positive spin, and yeah. I just helped her out. I'm so proud of you, Thank Carrie. You. Well, Thank on you. that note, that's it for this episode. Thanks so much for joining us, you guys, and tasting the lemon debacle of 1963. <laughs> <laughs> now, while you'll probably never make this recipe... I hope you don't. Please don't. You might want to check out the picture at momswoodenspoon.com. Also, be sure to set your alarm for our next episode, which will be released on February 26th. Carrie and I will be getting a little nutty with a sweet treat from 1974. Thanks for listening to Mom's Wooden Spoon. If you like what you heard, don't forget to subscribe. If you want a copy of this recipe or to check out our blog, click on the link to our website in the podcast description. If you'd rather, you could get to our website through Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Pick your poison. Don't say poison. We're making food. Seasoned tomato. Not tomato. Tomato. Tor. Tomato. 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 The tomato is completely different. Way. What if you use tomato? Tomato. 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 Tor. Tomato. Tor. Tomato. Tor.